So let's move on and welcome our next presenter, which is Sherry Merlin, CEO of KawalAI.co, talking to Trace AI on traceability access for consumers and exports. Welcome again, Sherry. Good day. I am Sherry Morillon, founder and lead innovator of Kawil AI from the Philippines and in the Southeast Asian region. We are Kawil AI, an industry agnostic artificial intelligence solution with customized computer vision tools for machine learning models that can be integrated to mobile and web applications. Our mission is to help humanities understand artificial intelligence. Our vision is to provide AI solution to preserve biodiversity, livelihood, and environment, reliable and unbiased data analytics on demand. Our solutions addresses sustainable development goals number nine, innovation and infrastructure through our smart products. SDG number 12, <clears throat> Responsible Consumption and Production, and SGD number 14, Life Below Water. Our core team has more than 20 years of combined experience in building AI products and services from research to commercial application, providing state-of-the-art AI tools. We are the front runner in computer vision AI in the Philippines. The technical team is rooted in AI academic research and with experience in cybersecurity and autonomous systems. The main problem that we are trying to solve is the illegal, unreported, and unregulated phishing in the Philippines, overcoming the pen and paper documentation method that still exists in countries like ours. The current pandemic has accelerated the need for the digital economy, especially in the food supply chain, to keep up with the increasing consumption of food, including seafoods. Digital illiteracy is the strongest barrier to, to technology adoption. The Philippines has one of the longest coastlines in the world, yet our fishermen remains the poorest of the poor due to the lack of resources and knowledge for documentation. Our fishermen sell cheaply or resort to illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing for fast money. Our solution, currently in beta version, is Trace AI, or traceability access for consumers and exporters powered by artificial intelligence, is an automated electronic catch documentation and traceability mobile application which was pilot tested with WWF to the sustainability program in Mamborao and Sablayan Occidental Mindoro last 2019. With initial registered 53 fishermen, 250 images collected, current accuracy at 80% and currently identifies yellowfin tuna species. How does our mobile application works? Trace AI on its beta version has leveraged AI and machine learning to reduce the friction in data gathering for fishermen and eliminate fraud. The mobile application works offline. The scan, snap, and send is the official method to record the catch data. This uses AI for fish identification, estimates the length and weight of the fish, specifically tuna, Auto-catch recording with geolocation and vessel information. Upon arrival to the landing port, the information is then uploaded to the cloud via mobile data or Wi-Fi. Due to the pandemic, we have geared enhancement of the system that will include additional seafood species for identification and traceability. It will include a seamless and interoperability system that can be available to government and private stakeholders via web application and cloud system. Lastly, is the marketplace and logistics integration to complete the catch-to-plate journey via QR code labels. If we look at the business aspect of the seafood traceability, 
I do believe that it, wor it is worth the hardship for bringing it to the market. In 2020, the global market for seafood traceability is $500 billion. And in the Philippines, it's currently $7.2 billion of market opportunity. This solution is very much scalable as it utilizes AI and data analytics as the future of traceability. We are here to share our knowledge and solutions and to be able to learn from others their best practices in AI data training and implementation with possible collaboration for this initiative. We look forward to, number one, the creation of database system that can be accessed openly for data training to help increase AI accuracy of tools. Number two, is to explore simplified AI applications that can be implemented using existing gadgets and mobile devices, making it cheaper and easy to implement. And third is the AI integrated research collaboration. Development of AI tools is tedious and expensive, and research funding for AI initiatives should be available to non-academic space to have a more granular understanding of grassroots application. For the adoption of the digital blue planet and to provide a thriving ecosystem, we need to involve the coastal communities in this initiative. The goal of Kawil AI is to leverage the data collected by the fishermen for them to access financial support like personal loans and grants. Second is the access to the tools for our fisher folks to have access to hardware to be able to utilize the technology for their own good. Third is to incentivize the fishermen to have the value of the data they contributed for the AI database and development. In summary, we have a built customizable mobile application powered by artificial intelligence for seafood traceability, which currently identifies tuna species with 80% accuracy using a mobile phone application. With, a, with ongoing enhancement for additional seafood species application and marketplace platform. We are Kawil AI Solutions, bringing AI technology from lab to life. We want to hear your thoughts and kindly reach out to us through our digital directory. Thank you and have a great day. Well, thank you very much for sharing your the work of your team, Sherry. It's uh, already quite apparent just how global the initiatives are. Just in the first three the three presentations we've had, and the nascent knowledge that's being built up. So, um, I got a I got a range of questions for you, but I'll, I'll try and package them, and you can choose which ones you like. I, I'm interested largely in the challenges you've overcome, that you've encountered and overcome, and especially about how you select the metrics that you think are gonna be most important to hone in on. Like, for example, what species you choose and what species you'll choose next. And I'm just wondering how you foresee the challenges that you've had for others coming into this situation and, and how there might be a requirement for, for international cooperations around the standards we all use so that when it does come to cross collaborating, we find this a lot easier. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Kim, for that question. So, you know, uh, our matrix uh, came from also from the community. So we uh, here in the Philippines, uh, tuna is like uh, number one uh, export uh, species for seafood. So, uh, but. Uh, as of now, we fall uh, we fall short for the you know so supply because of the illegal activities because of you know uh, fast money as you know and all, but with the support also of the international uh, uh, institution, we kind of pin down what are the things that they need or the constraint that they're having why they don't do uh, traceability or documentation. So number one is the understanding of uh, the value of really documenting and selling the, the, 
the product on a fair price. As you know, uh, even if it is uh, fast money, it's very easy to spend. It doesn't have value and you know, it can repeat that uh, sales again. But uh, for our fishermen, we want them to really find out the value of the, the sustainability side and like uh, complying with the necessary information and looking forward to the future to be included to that uh, you know, uh, market of uh, seafood and uh, supply chain. So that's how we do our metrics. And I think, yes, it, it can be replicated in other countries. And we're looking at one uh, uh, collaborating with other uh, Asian countries uh, for now and hopefully in other uh, tropical countries that has this specific requirement. And to add to that also, our metrics are patterned with the European compliance of export uh, market for tuna. So the metrics that we're collecting through our mobile application is uh, used to that uh, requirement. So yes. Sorry, if, if Matt give me one more go. I'm just very interested. We, we've also developed a, an app and looked at developing algorithms to look at a range of shark species. And we did have challenges in trying to work out how to get the best accuracy out of the algorithms. And you mentioned that you get 80%, and I'm sure that would improve all the time. I'm just wondering, yes. was most of the error margin coming from the way images were taken, the number of uh, images in your training data sets? Give us some ideas on, on, on the, the process of how you've done this and where you've managed to overcome anything or some ideas on, on what's helping you improve your algorithms for species identification. Yes, uh, the most important, uh, the most, I think, uh, challenge that we have encountered is how to take the picture correctly so that the algorithm can accept it for the 250 recorded uh, it's uh, it's accepted images out of like almost a thousand images that we have collected on uh, several occasions so uh, out of that and our algorithm uh, having uh, increased the the accuracy for 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 identification so we uh one is we need to have a good way to take the the pictures and that is why we need uh coordination with the fishermen and what we call in the locals enumerators so they are the ones teaching the fishermen how to take pictures and that's why i said uh, we need to communicate with the community so we can have better data. So that's number one uh, requirement in our training. And for now, we are really focusing on increasing and being agnostic in our identification. That's why the enhancement uh, of our app is uh, focused on uh, different species that are highly consumable on uh, international market. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Thanks for the amazing work you're doing there. Um, yeah, hi, Matt. I, yeah, I, I could talk for hours with you about um, you know, uh, regulated illegal fishing in the Philippines and, and what goes on there. Um, but what I was interested in is uh, how the fishes interact with you and how you, you're building a community of practice. Do you have any social incentives in there as well? I worked on an app with UNET that was called Environmental Witness. And in the Philippines, everybody talks to one another and have, <laughs> yeah, especially about fishing. Uh, and uh, that works really well. So do you have a social aspect to, to, your, to your work as well? You know, developing people reporting to one another about how, how well it's going or if they've seen something naughty or anything like that? Yes. Yes, uh, that's how we started with the fisher folks communities. Uh, we do uh, interact with them. We build our network, that network, and we tell them, uh, you know, the idea came from I was doing before marine uh, coral mapping. So we we rent boats. Uh, sorry for the short story. We rent boats, and uh, we rented a fisherman's boat. So while on the 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 sea. He was watching like online shows. So we said, 
that can be utilized, you know, accessing that, that data or the information online. Having seen that fisherman accessing online gave us an idea to create this app. So we, we tend to really tell them you, you want to know more. So for now, it's more on educational uh, aspect of social building, but we're looking at really incentivizing or having partnering with uh, stakeholders or government to really support that you know, initiative in documentation. So that's the overall goal in the social side of like a wheel and with our trace AI application. So yeah, we have seen that they have access in some areas so we need to utilize it and right now with the current situation of the pandemic uh having more access to you know uh internet and wi-fi even here in the philippines they're increasing the internet connection so we want to utilize it more on the community side especially on the fishing community fantastic Jerry. yeah there's a real role for social media at this time isn't there uh, yes, I, yes. A lot of people posting their, their catch online on Facebook and other yes, things. Exactly. In the Philippines. It works really well, doesn't it? Thank yeah. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Please do connect. Thank you very much.